What's going on, everybody? This is VJ uh, from the Hunt Family Farm, small black-owned family farm, and I want you guys to follow me along on my farm tour. All right, so here are my two beautiful donkeys. Um, the reason why I have them is they, they protect, obviously, my flock of sheep. My sheep protect the animals uh, from predators, wild things like coyotes, um, I guess foxes or dogs, anything that will hurt my precious lambs, right? Little known fact about donkeys, they like some of the da most dangerous animals in the world. Like, they'll kill anything. They absolutely hate, like, canines, so. They do a great job of that. Um, they'll bite you. So those chompers right there catch a hold of, of a coyote and, and do away with them. She's a little bit antisocial, and the one that just ran under is, is probably the most friendly donkey ever. You want green? Huh? You want green, big girl? Animals. You want green? But she, she's still anti. Look at her. Come here, girl. Now you want my friend. Now we cool, huh? Oh, now we cool. Can you see what I got? That's crazy. Oh, boy. Kinky girl. Hey, where my other bucket go? Somebody stole my bucket. She's so pregnant. Oh my God. Look at how pregnant. She's definitely having twins. She used to be really anti, but now she's like. Uh, she's crook, crook. Come on. <laughs> Shepherd boy, see how that works? But she don't like the stick. <laughs> Come here. Come here, girl. Oh, now, it's crazy what the stick do, right? Because they know this is used to wrangle animals for, like, anything. So come here, girl. Come here. I'm not being mean. Before I had my sheep here, I had them at, a, at our other farm at a different location, but I lost a couple of them to predators. And since I've been over here, they've done the job. But pretty nice animal, but she's a, she's definitely like a little dog. If I walk, she's gonna follow me. So I don't have a name for her. Probably should like name her. Think that'd be something we could do? Okay, so I need some help naming. Somebody please help name my donkey. What does she look like? Right. What can I name her? <clears throat> this farm has been, just been in my family for years um, and all of this land. Um, my great uncle did the justice of building this, you know, many, many years ago by hand, by itself. No help, but this right here was the chicken coop. In there, that's where the chickens would roost, lay eggs, do all those things. We had a few chickens, not, we don't have them here on this farm, but this is kind of where it all started. I mean, like I said, he, he built all of this by hand, by himself, like, no help. He was a pretty tough dude, man. All right, so this right here is actually my first vehicle right here. First thing I learned how to drive. I don't know, my dad always just threw you out there in the fire, so back, in, back when I was a kid, we used to farm tobacco. And so this was the track that we used to pull like the, the trailers in the field. And I was my job was to drive the tractor through the roads while people pick the tobacco. Um, so I learned how to actually drive from this. The highlight of the day for me was at the end of the day when we was pulling, finished pulling tobacco, I would drive this tractor to the barn, like well, to the barns down here to park it. But I think I might have been like five or six. Like it was real crazy. Now that I think about it, it's like, one of those things that just, I can't believe that this dude really would let me drive this tractor at like six years old. But um, it's still running, it still actually works. Like we still use it as you can see. We use it for planting. Um, 
breaking up land and all those things. I mean, it's a great investment. It was a great, it was a great investment in and still, you know, still running. Got to tinker with it here and there, but it definitely don't make it like it used to. This right here is one of the old tobacco barns um, on this farm. Prior to livestock farming, you know, tobacco was our big thing. And so, like, my uncle had this barn. He had another barn, but he ended up selling it. Uh, at my grandmother's house, we had two barns. And over at our other farm, we had two barns. So, like, my summers and August as a kid was always spent working in tobacco. Um, not necessarily pulling because I was just so small and so young at the time. But, you know, this is just kind of one of the old ones. He, We were able to convert this into, like, a storage building. Um, my uncle just never believed in like wasting anything. So like, it's really neat how he was able to put this together. So, um, so with this, this particular farm, I know it, I don't know like the whole history behind everything, but I do know that my great grandfather, um, yeah, that's my grandmother's father. Yeah. Him. So he, he was, uh, he was a farmer. He kind of got it started. Uh, and then, you know, they had a, a host of kids, which my grandfather, my great uncles, and aunts, they all grew up on this farm, on this very space right here. Um, my uncle Otis, who you know recently passed, was a person that kind of re restored everything and kept things going um, from then until now. And so, <clears throat> you know, over the time, he's done chickens, cows, pigs, every type of livestock, every type of growing of any kind of vegetable food that's how he survived um and he that, i mean that's what he did he was a, a definitely a hard working person believed in hard work and so you know because of that now i think that was one of the things we instilled in us um as a kid i just remember being out here we would just run around playing having a good time not even realizing like the, the joys of what we had uh of just being able to say like dang we got a farm out here you know what i'm saying it's a big deal because i know a lot of people don't get that get to see that so you know us keeping it um keeping it going that's gonna be like one of the biggest goals is for me myself my sister uh obviously my dad because you know he's into an agriculture gig and just keeping this family thing going and keeping it moving forward is something we definitely excited about doing this right here i think is collards um i know these this is kale that's like a dino kale i know it's used for making like kale chips i've made some kale chips before they're pretty good let me know down in the comments if, if kale chips is something that you kind of enjoy. But yeah, it's, it's really good. I put them in the air fryer. And I put them in the oven, put salt, pepper. I mean, pretty good. But this is just one part. I don't know. I'm I'm not a, a vegetable expert, so I'm not going to even sit here and lie. That's more my pops. He, he can grow anything. I'm more of an animal guy. But, you know, he grows a lot of different things, grows a lot of collards, cabbage, kale. Um, but this is just one section of what kind of what we have. Um, you know, we have different places that we plan and rotate, uh, do seasonal rotation so that we don't strip all of the nutrients out of the soil. I do know that much. By the way, this is all natural, no, no additive. Yeah, it's all natural. chicken or egg layers. Um, these particular chickens right here, um, they lay brown eggs. Uh, so it's all natural. Um, you know, you see what they're doing. They eat grass, they eat a natural feed, no GMOs, all that. So probably the healthiest and tasty eggs you should ever have in segregation. But no, it wasn't like they wouldn't, they wouldn't eat, they wouldn't be natural like moving around like this if they was in there with them. I guess because they outnumber them, I don't know. It's like gang violence or something. I don't know, it's weird. But, once we moved them on this side, we gave them their own house. You know, they're starting to lay down. Chickens are like very sensitive to like their stress level. And so the, this fence is actually electric, but you just lift up the box and you can collect the eggs that way. Okay, you going to get a box and then perch them. This is where they sleep at at night. So they go into the box and lay and then this is their perch, this is where they sleep at night off the ground. It's really weird how a chicken sleeps because they sleep balanced. Sometimes they up there, like they'll fly up there and everything. Stay up there at nighttime. Oh, no, it's feeding there. Uh, yeah, they got a little bit. No, no, actually it is. Uh, it's, uh, I can see it. I can see it at the top. Oh, dude, you see these crocs? You see that? Camo, the drill. Oh, the socks. Oh, man, this is the first pair I grabbed today. But you see it, they hitting them, probably twisted. 
Come on, dog. So I, I don't know. This is just our little dog. It's, I don't know where it came from. It's like, but the dog attack the chicken. It's socks, man. Come on, man. You know that. Life of a farm, dog. We talk about true fully, like, farm to table. I know that's, like, kind of like the way, but this is true, legit farm to table. So, um, these are our pasture raised turkeys. Uh, here on the fowl play poultry farm slash hunt family farm. Um, but these turkeys will be processed uh, for Thanksgiving this year. So a lot of them have already been sold, but they're grown like in a pasture. This fence, this particular netting, this fencing is really to protect them from predators. It's an electric fence, but we move it every so many days to get them plenty of space, uh, get them a healthy space to live in and move around be able to graze and eat freely, eat naturally, as opposed to like, you know, in factory farming where they live in these tight spaces and they're just pumping food. So they get an all natural, um, uh, a GMO free feed, um, which is, gives them the, makes them as healthy as possible. Uh, and then just having space to walk around, having sunlight, having fresh water, different things like that make them end up ultimately tasting delicious. Hope you enjoy uh, the tour of my family farm. Um, you know what to do. If you like the content, like, subscribe, comment, all of those things. Um, catch you guys later.